during this class. This class is called Tudor Crime and Punishment Most Cruel. This is a 90 minute class suitable for mature tweens and teens. Why do history? Well, those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it. Doomed. The quote is most likely due to the writer and philosopher George Santania. And its original form, it read, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. So why this class? Well, we've learnt through time that punishment doesn't have to be most cruel. And we have had some very cruel punishments in the past. So this class is to open your eyes to what was done in the past. So we are not doomed to repeat it. This class covers the topic of treason, stealing, poisoning, arson, witchcraft, Tudor law, execution, beheading, ducking, pillory, rank, stretching racks, flogging and stocks. This is a Tudor England historical class as well as a crime and punishment class. So let's step back in time into Tudor England. The time period occurred between 1485 and 1603 in England and Wales. That's the location. Most people in medieval England worked as villains. Not the baddies, but that was the word for it, villains. In other words, peasants or farmers in rural villages and settlements. Their life expectancy was only between 20, correction, the best life expectancy was between 30 and 35 years of age. You know, by age 40, you're considered very elderly. Royalty fared much better in general, if not executed for who knows what, or happened to be part of the royal family and a threat, or dying young from the many illnesses that existed without a good remedy that took anyone regardless of their wealth or social status. You know, exposure, that's what gets you. King Henry VIII himself lived to the age of 48 years old. He was considered quite elderly at the time. Tudor law was terribly harsh by today's more compassionate Western standards. The early Tudor poor laws were very much focused on punishing beggars and vagabonds for being just what they are, punishing the poor for being poor. For example, Vagabonds and Beggars Act of 1494, passed by the Tudor King Henry VII, decreed that idle people were to be punished. They had the logic that if you didn't have work, you're going to get punished for not having work instead of giving them work. <laughs> the closing of the monasteries in the 1530s, thanks to King Henry VIII, well done, Henry, not, after the Protestant Reformation, increased poverty as the church had previously helped the poor and helped to stabilise them and empower them and encourage them to be helpful, um, productive members of the community. In 1531, the Vagabond Act mandated that only licensed beggars could legally beg. So you had to have a license to beg. Justice of the Peace had the power to license the impotent, <laughs> yeah, that word, poor to beg. In practice, this meant that only the very elderly and the disabled could beg. So everyone else constantly got arrested and all kinds of punishments were applied. You know, a severe law in 1536 said that those caught outside of their parish without a work permit or um, permissions, uh, something signed, would be punished by being whipped through the streets. If caught a second time, they could lose an ear. Yeah, be earless. And if caught a third time, they could be banished or even worse, put to death. Trying to survive and care for their loved ones did result in some committing crimes to make money or to get food. Stealing was very common in this time period, as was treason, speaking up against the king. Well, you know, you're not happy, you might do it, right? 
poisoning, arson, and adultery. Witchcraft was also considered a select crime of this time period, depending upon who you used your skills of bewitchment against and who you benefited. Uh huh. The hearing and ultimate judgment was mostly always in favour of the rich and powerful. Whoever was the richest and the most powerful usually got their way. <sighs> this class will explore the topic of Tudor crime and punishment presented in a rich visual cartoon style PowerPoint presentation with my usual style of a little bit of sarcasm, a lot of humour, a lot of sympathy for those who actually went through this with the goal of opening up your eyes to how things were in the past. You know, learners, you're going to engage in a thoughtful, lively discussion with the teacher about Tudor history and crime and punishment. I hope you join me. Until then, don't lose your head. Bye for now.